Good afternoon, good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and be joy in it. I am glad to see that beautiful day the Lord has made. Because there's so many people who did not have that chance to see this such a beautiful day. A day of joy, a day of peace. A day that we are to bless the Lord for all He has done and not to our lives. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We come before you boldly to intercede for our brothers and sisters, even for my life. I thank you for what you've done for me and what you will always continue to do in, into my life and the life of my friends, my family, my, my church family members. I thank you, Lord, for letting us see another day. If it was not for your grace, it, if it was not for your mercy, we wouldn't be able to see that beautiful day. So, Father, we ask you in your name to make teaching easier for me tonight. As I prayed, I ask that you open up my brothers and sisters' heart. So the mind, they will understand and come to you. They will repent from the wicked ways and come to your marvelous way, Lord. Help us. Because the Bible said to seek you while you may be found. And it says, call upon Jesus while he is near and let the wicked forsake his way and the, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God for he will freely pardon. For the Lord says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither our way, your ways, my ways. Declared the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways are, are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts, saith the Lord Almighty. So, Father, we know our thoughts, our ways are not like yours. That's why we come to you today to beg for mercy and forgiveness to our sins and the sins of our family, friends, even the sin of this, of this country, this beautiful country that men tear apart, divided among the brothers, sisters. We ask for forgiveness for they know not what they're doing. I pray for Haiti as well, that these people in politics divide the country among ourselves so forgive them for they know not what they're doing we just pray for peace 
in both countries. Peace for Haiti. Peace for United States of America. Peace. Because we are brothers. We should not be killing one another. We should love on one another. That's your commitment. That's your law. That's what you left behind for us to do. But man, because of greed of power, greed for money, greed for power, they're dividing us, Lord. They make us feel inferior to others, which you were created all of us equal. But I pray for forgiveness. I pray for peace among us because we are brothers. Let all of us think about the put down the hatred, put down the bitterness, and take up love, take up kindness, take up goodness, take up gentleness, love, joy, and peace. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So my brothers, let all of us seek the Lord while he may be found. Because there would be a time you will call on the Lord but you will not respond. He will not yet to be found. But today is the day of salvation. It's the day that if you choose to call on the Lord, you may be able to find Him. Because He wants to deliver you from your addiction. He wants to deliver you from your sickness. He wants to take you away from where you are. He wants to give you a new, a new life. He wants to give you a new beginning. He wants you to turn from your wicked ways and come to the eternal life. I'm not talking only with the unsaved people because there's a lot of people inside the building but yet not saved. There's a lot of men with suit, with tie, preach good, pray good, with a lot of titles, still yet not saved. But we need to be saved in order to serve the Lord the way that the Lord asks us to do so. We need to be saved in order to love one another, to care for one another, to be kind to one another, as Mother Beulah always says, it is nice to be nice. And this is what we're missing in this planet. People stop being nice. So we stop being nice and expect people to be nice to us. We stop being loving, then expect people to love us. We stop giving and expect people to give in to us. And I believe the Bible says, do unto men as you would want them to do to you. If you want my love, you must first give me love. If you want my kindness, you must first give me kindness. If you want my attention, you must first give me yours. But we become so selfish. We make things all about us. It's all about me. It's all about me. 
But the Bible says, as a brother, as a believer, you ought to forget yourself. So the problem with us, we put ourselves first. In every situation, we see us first. And that's why we cannot give because we want to hold everything for ourselves. But the Bible said we have to share to one another. So if you truly accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will take yourself out and let other people come in. Before you see yourself, you will see others. You will treat others with, with kindness, with love, with gentleness, goodness. Then when people see you, be so kind. So they will be kind to you. Remember, when Jesus says, whoever kill with weapon, weapon will kill you. It's, it goes with everything in life. If I'm a bitter person, everybody will be bitter to me. If I'm a hatred person, everybody will be hatred back to me. If I'm a lying tongues, everybody will lie unto me too. So whatever you do in life, that's why I believe the Bible is said the Bible, what goes around comes around. The measure you, me you take to measure your brothers and sisters will be measuring you as well. So therefore, as a Christian, if you seek the Lord, you will find him. When you find him, you can never be the same. So that's why when you see fight, among us as Christians, that means that we haven't received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We have not been converted because we still in the old body. But when we get to the new body, there's no space inside of us for fight. There's no place inside of us for division. There's no place inside of our heart for hatred, for lying on each other, or for fighting to one another, or killing one another, or be stingy to one another. No, once you got Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, once you become saved and converted, you are a different creature. A different creation. So that's why. That's the reason why Apostle Paul was talking with the with the set of Corinthians chapter 13 to tell them, examine yourself, test yourself, prove yourself to see if you feel Christ Jesus inside of you. If you test yourself, if you examine yourself, if you don't see Jesus, if you don't feel Jesus, that means you failed the test. You failed the test. That's why you are the way you are. But my brothers and sisters, I want you to, to prove yourself and test yourself, examine yourself to see if Jesus resides in your heart. Because Jesus says there will be a lot of people called Lord, Lord. Not all of them will inherit 
the kingdom of God. Why? Because there's so much fake people, so much fake Christian, fake bishop, fake apostle, fake doctors, fake evangelists, fake pastors that call it, call upon the name of Jesus, but that not knowing who Jesus is really is or is really are. They don't because they're doing the things of their fathers. They're chasing after money, they're chasing after power, they're chasing after big building, they're chasing after wealth instead of chasing after the love and the word of God. Yes, you could be rich preaching the gospel because it's, it's really a good profession. People can learn how to dig down the people's pocket. But it would be different when you come before Christ. He will say, I know you not. So that's, that is the reason why I rather be poor in this planet, but knowing Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, because he says, where my, my treasure is, that there is my heart. My heart is in Christ Jesus. So I will build up my, my palace, my mansion, where thieves cannot can come and rob me out or, or dust cannot dirty it or rust cannot mess it up. I'd rather be putting my, my, my treasure up where Jesus is. Yet, yeah, I need money to survive on this planet. I need money to take care of my kids and my family, the church. We need money, but we need God more than money. We need God more than everything else. Because the absence of God, that's why we have a country like the way the world is today. Lack of Jesus. If everybody took Jesus seriously, even the priests, the Pope, the bishops, the apostles, the pastors, you call them the doctors. If in everything we were doing, we put Jesus first, people will see Jesus through us. We will have a different planet. I know when you want to set yourself to do right, to seek Jesus, the devil is at work. But let, let the devil fight the devil. But us as Christians, we should not fight one another. It shouldn't be a war about religions, just like it was when Jesus was on the planet. But the biggest enemies for, for Jesus was the religious people. The, tradi the tradition people, the religious people who follow religions but not follow the law of the Lord. They, they are transgressing the law but they, and they have a zeal just because you don't do as their forefather been doing. In Matthew, Jesus called them hypocrites. He says, you clean the outside of the plate, but you leave the inside dirty, filthy. Hypocrites, you need to clean the inside first. And that's what happened to us today because we are cleaning outside with nice, hair, 
nice suit, fade face, make face look good. Sometimes we even went to doctors to redo our face so we could look good from the outside. But the inside, that's where everything comes out and comes out. That's where hatred, bitterness, lies, adultery, killing, stealing, all of these things inside. The dirty. You need to clean inside. Don't worry about the outside. But worry most about inside. The religious people tell Jesus, why your people eat with their hands? With, they don't wash their hands before they eat. Jesus says, it's not what's going in that defile the man. It's what's coming out. Because what you're putting in cannot be dissolved and gonna be turning to waste anyways. It's gonna come out. One way or another. But what you bring out of your heart, that's where, that's what defiled you. And that's why today, church full with dead people, they're all dead. That's why. Inside of the churches, there's so many sick among us. Sickness that will kill us. And the Bible says, no disaster, no sickness, no plague that could kill us can come near us. But the churches are full with sick people. Because we all dead. We all a bunch of pretending religious people. People that follow tradition instead of follow Christ Jesus who died on the cross. He gave us the power to trip upon cancer, high blood pressure. Sugar or diabetic, post prostate, all kind of sickness or diseases. He gave us power to tread upon them. But because we so divided, because we we so religious, this thing is devoured us. It's destroying in the church. We're so busy, we don't have time for God. We don't have time to, to spend in the word of God. We don't have time to fast. We don't have time to pray. That's why every little headache we have, we have to run to a doctor. Every little thing we have, we have to run to ER instead of running to the ER of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It will take me a lot to go to the e ER of men. It would keep me unless my ER, my God says, I cannot do it. And I know there's nothing that God cannot do. Before I go to men ER, I will go to my God ER to see. And I know, because I know Jesus as my Lord and Savior, because I'm converted to the Christianity to be a follower of Christ, I have to be like him. He never sick. 
Yet he was hungry. I have to be hungry. Weak. I have to be. I could be weak. But the Bible says, when I weak, then I'm strong. When I pour, then I'm rich. Hallelujah. My trust is in the Lord. The Bible says, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will add unto it. So if we were seeking God's kingdom, I bet you, our life wouldn't be the way, that's the way it is. If we have put God first in every step of the way, the mistake, the mistakes I made, I would never make them. But when I learn it, I learn too, too, too late. But that's why now I come to tell you in every situation, every step of the way, put Jesus first. And when Jesus is first, hallelujah, you cannot be wrong. You cannot be wrong when you put Jesus first in your marriage, when you put Jesus first in your fiancé, when you put Jesus first in your boyfriend and girlfriend, when you put Jesus first in your job, when you put Jesus first in your money, when you put Jesus first in your, in your, in your life, when you put Jesus first in your career, when you put Jesus first in your church, family, you cannot be wrong. I'm just learning to put Jesus first in everything I'm doing. I'm learning to put Jesus first because I know when Jesus is first, I cannot be wrong and I cannot fail when I have Jesus in front. Because Jesus never fell a battle. He always won. So when Jesus is first, we will be the winner. So church, wake up. Church, wake up. Saints of God, wake up. This is not the time for playing. This is not the time for gaming. This is not the time for faking. It's time to wake up and put Jesus first. Because we are living in a difficult time. The time is so crucial. We need Jesus first. Take back and God reach us. Put it back. Lift it up and God reach us. Put it back in the schools. Put it back in the banks. Put it back in the political realms. Put it back public affair and God with us and believe God can change things around and your family and God with us at home make it look like God first in your children's life God is first your wives, your husbands God is first your financial, God is first. Once we put God first, my brothers, we cannot be wrong. And there will not be fight among us. Because it will not be about you anymore. It's about God. Like I was saying this morning, in God's business, it's not like a polit political party, like we could be playing diplomacy. No. We have to be playing. Open, clean, like the Bible, sincere. Because the Bible says God loves a sincere heart. Your heart has to be sincere in everything you do. When people are around you, when people are not around you. Be yourself. That's what I always tell my kids. Be 
yourself because everybody else be already been taken the only one left is you you got to be plain you got to be yourself do not try to imitate do not try to copy other people's things just be clean and when you come before the lord come with a sincere heart when you see your brothers your sisters love them with a sincere heart treat them with a sincere heart care for them with a sincere heart love them with a sincere heart share with them with a sincere heart be kind to them and that's why the bible urges us to do and if we do my brothers my sisters we will have a different church it's time for us to get up it's time for us to be real because we are living in a terrible and difficult time here in America things we see today we never seen them 20 30 years ago maybe people who live longer than i 70 years 60 years 50 years ago they haven't seen these things things that we seeing today it is rough it is tough and it will get tougher. But all we need, we need to step up. We need to rise up. Being true Christians that love and willing to sacrifice. Take yourself out of the equation. Because the Bible says, help your neighbors. Love your neighbors as you love yourself. So you will, nobody ever want to see them suffer. Why would you want to see your brother or your sister suffer? No one wants to go to bed hungry. Why would you allow your brothers and your sisters go to bed hungry? So put Jesus first. And everything you do, let's put Jesus first. Step up. Get up. Put Jesus first. And he will change your life. Even this planet. That beautiful country. And the country of Haiti. Other countries will be changed. When we put God first. When we put God first in our government. When you put God first in our churches. When we put God first in our family. When we put, put God first in our financials. When you put God first in everything we do. We cannot fail. May God bless you. May God keep you safe. Until we return again. Go in peace. Shalom.